heavenly kings. Wayan, Hakuchu snapped. Your head hurt, drafts up from where it was resting in your hands. Yeah, you reply lazily. Just making sure you're awake. He mutters before looking away. You flash a grin at him before putting your arms down and sitting up. You were on a rooftop, so you could feel the cold wind leaving in and out of your hair. You leaned back against the wall you were sitting by, crossing your legs. Izanal is trying to put together a new gang. The plan is to gather the old S-62 generation and bring them into it as what Izanal likes to call Heavenly Kings. Or something along those lines. You'll be honest, you weren't really listening too much. You ran into the lum last night while you were at a party. They persuaded you to join Ten... Tenjiku? You don't really remember. Apparently, they'd been looking for you. You disappeared for a couple of years when you finally got out of Juvie. In fact, you were shocked they found you at all. You changed your name and moved to a different part of Tokyo with your dad after your mom's death. They shouldn't have been able to find you. They did. And the next one to find is the Haitani brothers. When? We'll leave that up to you. You always were quite close to the older ones. Are you refusing to say their names because you look down on them? Or have you just forgotten and don't want to look like an idiot? N no, I haven't forgotten them. They're just nothing to me. Nothing more than tools. He growls, a promise of violence present in every syllable. All right, I'll believe you, you say, doubt cutting your voice. He glares at you before continuing on with his plan. He's kind of cute when he's angry, not that you'd admit that to anyone. The way his eyes glisten with a look of insanity, you're not sure if you'd try to piss him off all the time because you like that look or enjoy the danger of it. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Kokucho gets up and begins walking toward the door that would take him off the roof and back into the building. Where's he going? You ask the white-haired boy, standing near the edge. He was looking over the city, like he was the king of it. He was definitely a drama kid when he was in school. You didn't listen to any of what I just said, did you? Slight amusement slipped through as he spoke. Nope, you say. Happily popping the pee, you see a smile on his face as he quietly chuckles. He's different when it's just him and you. It's like there are two Izanas, two completely different people. You're aware of what task I left you, aren't you? Snatch up the Haitani brothers and bully them into the shitty ass uniform. You reply, pinching the sleeve of your stupid red jacket thing. It's so ugly, you're hoping he didn't design this himself. You let out a yawn as he faced towards you, turning his back on the city. And? Shit, there is a second job. Uh, to make you a cup of coffee? He raises a pale eyebrow. Okay, so it was not to make him a cup of coffee. Got it. I want you to help me find Mikey. He says, looking you in the eyes. Mikey who? He raises his eyebrows higher this time. I'm kidding. It's your half-brother that you hate for some unknown reason that you want to hurt or kill? He walks over and sits down next to you, stretching one leg out and resting a hand on top of the other bent knee. He rests his head against the wall and looks up at the sky. You marvel at the way the lights hit his face and the dark shadow of his neck, which just highlighted his jawline. His eyes shone as he looked up and a smile grew on his face. Tenjuku is going to run all of Tokyo. You sure about that? You say, stretching your hands up and letting out a yawn and squeezing your eyes shut. Being pretty must be tiring, huh? What, what did he just say? Your eyes shoot open and you look at him, not sure if he was joking or not. You see him watching you, the same smile still on his face. A thought pops into your mind, and you attempt to conceal the smirk that was beginning to grow on your face. You must be exhausted, then. You reply with a wink, allowing the smirk to grow. 
You see his pale skin turn a light pink shade, and he turns his head to look back at the sky. D did I just make the mighty is in the blush? You ask, amusement failing your voice. What? No. Shut the hell up. He yells, a crazy look growing in his eyes. Is it crazy that you like him? Maybe you're the insane one here, but out of everyone in this S62 generation, I've always liked him the best. It was different, though, when you were younger. A touch kinder and more charismatic. Those qualities are long gone now. They've just been replaced with ruthlessness and cruelty. Yet, how you feel about him hasn't changed. Do you see me as a tool? What? You don't actually see any of us as friends, do you? Even back then, you never did. We were just weapons for you to use, right? He paused for a moment. Well, yeah, that's your only use to me. Ouch. Your heart sinks and you look down at your hands resting on your legs. It's going to be awfully lonely for you, you know? You reply, trying to hide your disappointment. Hmm? Once your plan is through, you'll have a dead stepbrother. And no friends. You're just going to be ruling over Tokyo. He paused and looked away. Is that what you want? To rule over Tokyo? Yeah. He scoffs. By yourself? Well. He drifts off, not bothering to finish the sentence. He stares out at the edge with a blank face. I'll always be your friend. Even if you don't see me as one. That way, you won't be lonely. You smile at the white-haired boy next to you, and the smile that had suddenly vanished appeared on his face. This time it wasn't the psychotic smile you were so used to seeing, but an almost warm smile. You think it's scarier when he smiles like a normal person, to be honest. Fucking terrifying. You'll always have me and Kakugan. You finish, letting your head fall and come to rest on his shoulder. Unlike every other time you've done this, it doesn't shove you off. After a couple of minutes, you stand up and stretch your arms above your head and move towards the ledge where Izuna had been standing a couple of minutes ago. You grip onto the damp fence, which circled the roof and leaned slightly over it, looking out onto the city. A rush of air hits your face and your hair is blown backwards. We'll roll the city under you as your weapons, for you to use whenever you please. You step onto the bottom of the fence and lean out further, stretching out a hand toward the sun. You imagine just being able to grab it and hold it in your hands. That's when your elbow buckles and you feel yourself fall forwards. Your hand grips tighter onto the bars as your body tips over and you find yourself hanging off the ledge. Shit, the fence is wet. Your fingers are slipping, not being able to keep their grip on the wet fence. You feel your hand part from the fence, and gravity takes hold of you. That's when two hands grab onto your wrist, and you look up and see his face peering down at you. He looked terrified. You've never seen him slightly scared, let alone this full of fear. He struggles to pull you up managing to get you high enough to swing your other arm up and grab onto his hand. You plant your feet into the wall and scramble up. He places a foot on the fence and uses the extra force to pull you over the fence and back onto the roof. He slips just as you get your feet over, and he falls onto his back, taking you with him. You lie on top of him, not moving out of shock. Your head was resting against his chest, and you feel his warm hands wrap around you, pulling you in tighter onto him. Both of you are out of breath, and the adrenaline running through your veins doesn't help with trying to regain it. He lets it off, tightening his grip more. You feel your head rise and fall in rhythm with his chest. Rule Tokyo with me, Wyan. He finally says, between deep breaths, What? You place your hands against the cold, damp ground on either side and push up. You feel his grip loosen on you as you plant your knees onto the ground and sit on top of him. He pushes up against the ground and rises up, his hands firmly behind him. It'll be our kingdom. 
I... I want you by my side. His breathing begins to return to normal. You feel your face go red as you look into his deep purple eyes. Are... are you serious? He lets out a quick breath which almost sounded like a laugh. Yes, I'm serious. He brings a hand to your face where it was placed behind him and strokes your cheek. So, what do you say? He leans forward slightly. You can feel his hot breath on your face as he talks. He looks at you, eyes full of desperation and yet also hope. A million thoughts run through your head before you can even process a single one. You feel your mouth open. Yes. He gently brings his face closer to yours, planting a soft kiss on your lips. You freeze for a second before kissing him back and placing a hand on his chest. You move your hands upward and wrap it around the back of his neck and let his fingers run through his hair. For a psychopath, he is surprisingly gentle. I was gone for five minutes. What the actual fuck? You push away, falling backwards onto your elbows in the process and see Kakuchu standing in the doorway. The bag he had been holding was lying crumpled up next to him on the floor. This had better not be how you welcome everyone into Tenjuku, Izana. It's not. Shut the fuck up. The obvious note is so funny. She said, I literally wrote up to where she was leaning on the fence without a plan and thought, haha, wouldn't it be funny if she fell? Wait, I'm the author. I can do that. And that's how this fic was born. I really enjoyed uh, this fanfiction and I know I've been gone for freaking ever. I'm trying to be back, but I'm also working um, at McDonald's now. So every weekend, working like 8 to 4. Uh, 9 to 3, and I think next week I work 7 to 3? No, I work 7 to 1. They're cutting my hours, guys, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, and then I also have school. And we got another cat. Did I tell you? We got another cat. My cat. She doesn't really like him, but we're getting used to it. He has a cold, so we're trying to get um him, you know, we got him medicine. He just came back we just came back from the vet today so yeah anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this fan fiction somebody requested it um but yeah i'm gonna continue doing more have an amazing morning have an amazing afternoon have an amazing evening whenever you are and i'll see you guys when i see you guys goodbye everyone